Hey friends, Sheila here. I am a nutritionist and nature lover, and I just finished a three and a half month cycle tour from Scotland to Croatia. It was an incredibly beautiful, life-changing, perspective-shifting experience for me. And over the last few months, I've had people reach out to me and express that solo cycle touring is something they really want to do for themselves, but they're nervous about it, they're wondering if it's safe, and I can completely relate to that because I had so many fears and anxieties before setting out on this trip. I completely I completely believe that solo cycle touring can be a safe and enjoyable experience, but it's a new experience. As kids, we had to learn how to cross the street safely and how to not touch a hot oven. Both things that we wouldn't consider unsafe anymore because we know how to handle those situations and to keep ourselves as safe as possible. It doesn't mean accidents can't happen, but it means we know how to take every measure we can to keep ourselves safe. And cycle touring is just like that. You just need to learn the steps you can take so that you can have a safe and enjoyable trip. But if you're totally new to cycle touring, you probably have no idea where to start. So today I'm talking about seven of the steps I take to make myself feel safe while I'm solo cycle touring. So without further ado, let's get into it. Number one is to research the place you want to visit. In order to feel safe and comfortable wherever you go, it is important to know a bit about that place. Some things to keep in mind are weather. Are there any particularly challenging weather conditions you should be aware of? What is the social and political climate? Is that country going through anything in particular politically or socially that might make you not feel comfortable? Another thing is wildlife. What is the wildlife like there and what experience do you have with wildlife? Traveling by bike is such an amazing way to experience wildlife, but it also depends what you're comfortable with. If you go somewhere like Scotland or England, it's mostly just deer and rabbits. But if you're somewhere like the forests of Canada, there are bears and wolves. So you want to be aware of those things so you can decide if you're prepared to deal with them and what precautions you would have to take to feel safe while you're there. And language is something else to keep in mind. Is it a different language? Do you feel comfortable with the language barrier? Do you want to learn a bit of that language so you feel comfortable in that place? So these are all things that are great to research ahead of time, so you can create a trip where you are going to feel safe and comfortable. And keep in mind, you can always start with a trip near you. Even if there's one place you really want to cycle tour and you don't feel quite comfortable going there yet, don't worry, start with something that you feel comfortable with. You can always build your way up. What's most important is always starting with where you feel comfortable. Number two, know your lodging options. Think about where you're going to feel most comfortable spending the night. Do you want to use campsites? Do you want to use hostels? Do you want to wild camp? Wild camping is legal in some countries. Do you want to use something like warm showers to stay with other cyclists? In reality, you're going to end up doing some combination of some or all of the above. But for me personally, it's not really enjoyable to be cycling all day with no idea of where you're going to spend the night. So the night before I would set out, I'd look at my route and I would pick out a bunch of lodging options along the way. It's a good idea to have a few lodging options near where you want to end up, but it's also good to have one or two lodging options closer just in case you get tired and you just don't want to go that distance that day. It is always way safer to call it a day early and rest and to push when your brain just isn't thinking clearly. Number three is track your locations. This is totally optional but it gave me a sense of security to know that my friends and family had an idea of where I was. So this started out as just a Google Excel sheet. I shared it with my friends and family and I would update it with where I was going, the address, phone number, if I was staying with somebody. It just made me feel safer knowing that somebody knew where I was. Halfway through my trip, I actually switched over to track my tour. It's an app. I'll put the link to that below. And then you can actually put a GPS point with any details of that day or where you are. And then you also end up at the end with a nice little map of all the places you went. So safety and fun. Number four is to be visible. This is always important as a cyclist, but especially when you are solo cycling on your own and there isn't a big group that might be more recognizable, it is great to be as visible as possible. So lights for your front and your back. You can pack spare lights if you want. If you don't, just making sure you have spare batteries or that you keep them very charged. There's reflective tape you can put on your belongings. There's high visibility jackets and vests. There are so many options to make you feel that you are as visible as you possibly can be so that you feel safe on the road. Number five is to look up bike routes and to use bike friendly apps. Bike routes are always great, but they are especially great when you are just starting out because one, they mean that you have a path 
to follow. You are not as likely to get lost. You are either on a path totally separate from cars, or you might be on a rural road, but where there are few cars. And most importantly, when it's a cycle route, you are more likely to see other cyclists. And this is so wonderful because the cycle touring community is amazing. Everybody waves at each other. If somebody stopped because they have a problem, others will stop and check if they're okay, if they can offer any kind of mechanical support. One time I was stopped on the side of a bike route just to have lunch and three people stopped to make sure I was okay. So if you're nervous about setting out on your first solo cycle tour, bike routes are an amazing way to meet other cyclists, to get advice, to feel like you're part of this community and feel like other people are looking out for you on the road. Now, bike routes aren't available everywhere. And when they aren't, I would turn to bike friendly apps. There are two apps I would use, Komoot and Maps.me. I will link to both of them below. You can select bike as your option and it will put together routes designed for bicycles. I use both of them because I find they're good at different things. Komoot will put together routes that are more direct, but they might put you on slightly busier roads. Roads that cyclists are still allowed to be on, but that can just be a little speedy. Maps.me, on the other hand, will take you away from those busy roads, but that often means the route might be much longer, it might be hillier. Both are great. I would often look at the route for both and just decide how I was feeling that day. Number six, ask questions. Ask all the questions. This is part of why I want to do this video so that hopefully I can answer some of your questions. But when you're starting out something like this, you are inevitably going to have a ton of questions. And there are some amazing cycling resources out there. There are several Facebook groups that I could not have done this trip without. I will link to them below. Anytime I had a question, I could toss it in there. And there are thousands of other cyclists who have just cycled all over the world and one of them will almost surely have the answer you need. Warm showers that I mentioned earlier is also amazing. I loved staying with other cyclists because they would know the area way better than I possibly could and they would have some inside scoop on an enjoyable route to get where I wanted to go. So please never ever feel alone. If you have a question, it is not a dumb question. Find the supports you need so that you can feel comfortable. And number seven, trust your gut. I decided when I set out on this trip that I was going to listen to my intuition and trust my gut. Our bodies are incredibly smart. We are animals and all animals are designed to look for danger. It is built into our biology to try to keep ourselves safe. So when that spidey sense goes off and something feels off in your gut, it might not make sense, but your body has done all of these calculations based on the information it's taking in and decided that it doesn't feel safe in this situation. So I promised myself that if that gut response happened, I was just going to listen to it and remove myself from that situation however I could. Didn't have to make sense. I didn't have to justify it. I was just going to get myself to safety. So if any person or any situation makes you feel uncomfortable, just trust that instinct and listen to your gut. So those are my seven tips for safe solo cycle touring. I really believe that in order to feel safe and comfortable, the two biggest things are information and experience. And you get information by asking questions and researching and getting all the knowledge you possibly can. And you get experience by getting out there and doing it in whatever way you are comfortable. Joining cycling groups, asking a friend to go on a bike ride with you, asking a friend to do a small cycle tour with you, joining a group cycle tour, riding through different types of weather, riding on different types of terrain, all these things will help you get more experience. So once you have the information and you have the experience, then you will start to feel more comfortable and you can have a really safe and enjoyable trip. If this is something you want to do, start learning, start researching, start cycling more and just see what you find enjoyable and what you want to do. Cycle touring is incredibly fun and it's all about creating the adventure that is right for you. If you are a fellow solo cycle tour and you have some tips that I did not include here, please leave them below so new cycle tours can read all your great advice. If you have any questions about solo cycle touring that I did not answer in today's video, do not hesitate to leave them below. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please give it a like, it really supports my channel. And if you wanna be notified whenever I put out new videos, hit subscribe and the little bell below. Thanks, have a good one.